this is not my favorite thing to do. <laughs> I love teaching, and that's what I'm good at. And for some reason, they think I'm going to do the speaking, too. But this was a special weekend. I um, was supposed to go to St. Louis to teach a part four class. Well, when I heard that Tom Gelardi was going to be honored, I had to give that up. Because Tom Gelardi made a big difference in my life, and so I wanted to share some of that with you. He probably doesn't even know some of this. But I became acquainted with chiropractic in 1958. For 13 years, I prepared for the chiropractic profession for 13 years. And I want to tell you some of the things that I did over those 13 years. I worked in the chiropractic office. I did chiropractic orientations. I did individual chiropractic lectures. I attended Lyceum at Palmer College from 1960 all the way through until 1970-something when we changed over. I attended chiropractic conventions. And Richard taught chiropractic at the Columbia Institute of Chiropractic. The subject was chiropractic philosophy. And at every quarter, every trimester, when he been finished, they would take a test. Everybody took a test. And everybody thought that Reggie collected or corrected those papers. He never read one single one of those papers. <laughs> Joe Don Frio got an A from me. <laughs> Joe Strauss got an A from me. <laughs> Even Arnie Landy passed because of me. <laughs> For seven years at our home, we had chiropractic lectures, and I attended every one of them. I attended more chiropractic conventions and more sessions than anybody ever, probably ever did, without doing something about it, like going to school and making some, something happen. So I decided, this is it, I'm going to school. The only school I could go to was in New York. Why? Because that's an hour away. So I drove to New York each day. And um, for a year and a half, I fought with every single teacher in that school. Because I didn't go to school to learn chiropractic. I knew it before I got there. I didn't have to listen to these chiropractic philosophy teachers who thought they were philosophy teachers who didn't know anything at all. So I fought with them. I fought with Dr. Napolitano. He got to the point where he said, why don't you leave here? You're so unhappy. Why don't you get out of here? Why don't you go to another school? I said, I checked it out. I went to Palmer. They told me I'm going to have to spend extra time. I'm not spending an extra minute. <laughs> so I am here in the school, and I really did like it. Actually, uh, Napolitano and I actually uh, we got to terms after a while. And he said, listen, um, why don't you just teach here? So he gave me the job of teaching, and that's how I got to be Tony DeMarco's teacher while I was a student at Columbia Institute. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, Tom Gelardi called. And he, um, he said he wanted to start a school in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Well, let me give you the history behind that. Reggie was in school with Tom. I don't know that they knew each other that well. But they got to know each other when they were representing representative to the ICA. Reggie was the art representative from New York, from New York, and Tom was the representative from South Carolina to the ICA. And when the ICA decided to change the rules one day and add to chiropractic something called complementary of and preparatory to the practice of chiropractic. It became clear to them 
that they were going to be headed in a PT direction and who knows where after that. So that's how Tom and Judith knew Reggie. They fought together for straight chiropractic because that's what we believe in and this is what we wanted and this is what we felt. If we're going to have chiropractic survive, it had to be on, on those terms. So he called him up and he says, I want you to come and have uh, to, to, to uh, uh, I want you to do some recruiting for us. This is how he starts out. I want you to do some recruiting for us. So uh, we're having these sessions at our house and we got all these people and we are collecting all of these students and, uh, and then one day he calls up and he says, I want to come over, I just want to visit. We're going to talk about the setup of the school. So this was the next that he said. He shows up with two guys. We make a deal, we're going to go to dinner with these the five of us. And I said, listen, I'll drive because uh, you guys want to talk about the school. I don't have to, I just listen, right? So we, made, we drive over to this restaurant, but we're not even two minutes into the drive. When Reggie, when Tom says, the real reason we're here is because we want you to close down your office, sell everything out, move out, come down to Spartanburg, South Carolina, and teach at our, at our chiropractic college. And Reggie said, when do you want me there? <laughs> And they told me, oh, we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, we're going to do that, all this other kind of stuff that they're putting together to, to, to build this whole school situation. And, and I said, okay, we'll, we'll have a dinner, and we'll open the two bottles of wine that we, we brought with us. They don't tell us they're teetotalers, these guys. They none of them drink, except me. <laughs> two bottles of wine, I think. <laughs> <laughs> now I should tell you this one thing that maybe you don't know about, and as before I went to chiropractic college, um, Columbia Institute of Chiropractic, which was accredited in the state of New York, you could get a license in the state of New York, except about a year or two before I went, they decided to take that away. So I went to an unaccredited school, an unaccredited school. I waited 13 years to go to school. I finally end up in an unaccredited school. And I didn't, I didn't bother me, and I didn't really care if it was unaccredited, because they weren't going to stop me from practicing chiropractic no matter what. Yeah. They're telling me I can't go. I can't. They said, you can't go to New York. You can't, and I'm going, oh, we live on the, on the border there, so we got to figure that out. And if I had to practice without a license or go to jail, who cares? We were, we were prepared to do anything in those things. It didn't make any difference whatsoever. So we took these guys, these New Yorkers, with their long hair and their New York attitude, their chip on their shoulder attitude to Spartan Road, South Carolina. <laughs> Can you imagine? The first class that was there, sure we had a couple of southerners, we had a couple of foreigners, we had a couple here and there, but we had these crazy people totally committed to the chiropractic principle even before they got there. An enthusiasm that lasted the entire time that they were in school. You could, you could feel it when you walked into the school. Everybody wanted to be at that school. I told them that school and every day, I learned something new from these, these, uh, these students. They were incredible. They all wanted to learn, and they made me learn a great deal. Now, if you think it was easy to do all of this for Tom Girardi, he had to put up with us. He had to put up, he had to make his teachers happy. He had to make the students happy. He had to fight with the legislature. He, we were not an accredited school. We're telling all of these people to come down and join us. We don't even know if you're ever going to get a license, but, but this, is what we, this is what we're going to do. I mean, it was, a, it was a terrific time. We were the first chiropractic college to open in 25 years. Life College rather did, did not open until someone, someone after, the, after that time. So 
it was it was a, it was a special thing. I mean, the students were the best of the cervical justice I ever saw. They were they were absolutely phenomenal. Um, they went out and practiced, and, and many of them many of them came to my classes even years later because they wanted to move to another state and had to take some kind of uh, test, and so they would come to me to take the test. Also, Tom Gelati launched my career. I was going to go to chiropractic college because I was going to do what you wanted to do. I was going to go out and practice. He took that away from me, but he gave me something else. And the something else he gave me was national board review classes that I could do, and I could take care of everybody. Not just Sherman, but every school, every school in the country. And it was a, it was a phenomenal a phenomenal experience. I don't even know where I am in this talk that I'm trying to put together. <laughs> but, but I just wanted to let you know that this was, it was a phenomenal experience. I, I, uh, I, 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 I look at Sherman College now, I've been down there recently, and I'm very, very pleased with what I see there. I'm pleased with the students, with what's coming out of there, with the attitude of the teachers. Everything is an important, really, really important. Um, when we taught chiropractic in that school, it was with the understanding that we were teaching it. Med I, we got taught medical stuff. I didn't teach any chiropractic. I taught diagnosis treatment. Uh, I taught orthopedics. I taught, uh, I taught all, uh, osteology, all these other kind of uh, medical classes that we did. But it was always with a chiropractic flavor. It was always with the understanding of chiropractic. Every single one of those teachers in that school who were PhDs had to sit to a philosophy class in order to teach at that school. That's what they did. I mean, they, they were, there was no one who was going to put chiropractic down, not while we were there, anyway. So, this is what we got. We got a solid chiropractic philosophy taught to every student. We did no physical therapy. We did no extremity adjusting. We did no blood work in that school. We did physical examinations that included spinal examinations to locate subluxations. We were strictly a chiropractic school before the CCE came in and tried to and that changed a great deal of what, what happened. And it was Tom Gelati who made all of that happen. Every single bit of it. <coughs> he stayed there for 25 years or more, probably more than 25 years. I don't know how many, how many years were you there? 125, something like that, whatever it was. <laughs> whatever it was. What he did was, he kept his promise to teach great chiropractic principles for the entire time so that you could have a chiropractic future. Following the path of least resistance so that chiropractic could be accepted by the mainstream society was never a part of his thinking. Nor should it be yours. We had in that school students that came to us from Spain. They were, actually they came from us, to, came from Paris, they later went to Spain, and their name was Miguel and Michelle Gold. They were in the third class at Sherman College. They, Miguel came with no English at all, speaking English. And, and Michelle had spent a half of like six months in this country, so she learned some English. And, and they were some of the best students that we had. So after it was after it was all over, well while they, while we were there really, um, they came to school with three children, and um, one of those children is sitting here in the audience today, and that is Inez. She's still Inez. contact her parents because I told them that we were having a special program here for Tom Gelati and I asked if they would send us a letter to get to give us a flavor of what was happening in Sherman at the time that they were there and, 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 and so this is what they wrote to me. Dear Tom, this is for you. 
When newly arrived Miss Spartanburg from Paris, when we when we arrived in, in, from uh, uh, Spartanburg uh, from Paris to Spartanburg, our three young children, you welcomed us all into your chiropractic practice free of charge, and this touched our hearts. When we were learning that our children had cried, when you learned that our children were cried after leaving behind all of their toys in France, you surprised us one day, arriving at our home with your station wagon full of toys donated by your kids. During this time, we would regularly go to Gaffney, and after getting checked, we would often go to your home and share dinner and chat about children and chiropractic and the future. In order to cross the yard to your house and elude the dog's overzealous affection, your daughter would lay on top of the St. Bernard. <laughs> on one of those evenings, you told us that your dream was to be a pilot and fly a small plane. To which Betty said, with her usual sweetness, no, Tom, this is not your main dream. Your dream was to open and run a chiropractic college. And that is what you are doing. Mm -hmm. And you have no choice but to agree with Betty. <laughs> so yes, you abandoned your dream, one dream, to make another one come true. One larger and more beautiful. Sherman College of Chiropractic. We, all the way from Spain, and from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for such generosity and for having contributed so profoundly, changing our lives, and that's so many others for the better in so many places in the world. With all our love, Miguel, Michelle, Natasha, Inez, Samuel, and now Thomas, Sarah, and Lucas. I can't go back and live those days again, except in my dreams, to my mind, but they were great. I'll never forget the Lyceum, the first Lyceum, in which we had a small group of people, one tent was set up, and everybody <coughs> was asked to make some contribution to the school, and everybody was given a candle. And every candle was lit all the way around that tent outside. And, well, and during that thing, Reggie Gabe did a fundraiser. And the fundraiser, I was, the people who had, they, they were on welfare, were given money. It was such an emotional thing, you cannot believe what was happening. At the time, I was still a student, remember? I was, uh, 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 when Sherman started, I still had another year of college to go. Reggie left, you know, we, uh, uh, Ernie bought the house, got the, uh, we got the, uh, uh, the, the clinic, I mean, all of the people and every, the patients along with the house, and, 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 they, and they all left. And, uh, and, then I was, and then I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> Let me just have a drink of water. In my last year of college, of uh, chiropractic college, Dr. Napolitano chose me and two other guys to go to Loris College in Iowa for three weeks so that we could get Columbia Institute accredited so that students could get student loans. It was one of the deals that we had made with them that we, need, we needed to go out there and, and to get student loans. He gave us money to do that. And we were there at Lyceum on our way to Loris College. And the money was left with Sherman College. Dr. Napolitano never knew that he was such a big contributor. <laughs> so I don't know what else to, I don't know what to say to tell you. 
Tom is a, you don't have to give me five minutes. I was finished five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> but the greatest thing, I, I, I do want to say that, that, that I do look forward to coming here to New Beginnings because this is like a family to me. Uh, you know that, that in my, the, last, the last days that, that Reggie was alive, I called on you, my family, to come. And you did. And now we have a thanks for all of you who helped me. Thank you.